Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an absolute pleasure to introduce our next guest, a true luminary in the world of Canadian theatre. For the past two decades, he's held the title for the most produced playwright in Canada, with an astonishing average of 150 productions annually. He's such an iconic figure that he even has his own festival. Born on St. Valentine's Day in Newmarket, Ontario, and raised in the vibrant city of Toronto, his journey into the world of theatre is as charming as it is serendipitous. After studying radio and television arts at Centennial College and Confederation College, he embarked on a radio career spanning 25 years, taking him from Thunder Bay to Winnipeg, Kingston, and finally Fredericton, New Brunswick. It was in Fredericton in 1980 that Destiny intervened, invited to accompany a friend to an audition for a community theater production of Harvey. Norm landed the role of L. Wood P. Down, despite never having seen a play before. That fateful moment ignited a passion for theater that would shape his remarkable career. Two short years later, he penned his first professionally produced play, Sinners. This was just the beginning. Foster's repertoire now boasts over 55 plays, including the critically acclaimed The Melville Boys, which enjoyed a successful run off-Broadway in New York. This play, in particular, became a signature work propelling him to the forefront of Canadian theatre. While Foster's is renowned for his comedic genius, he seamlessly weaves moments of heartfelt emotion into his narratives, creating stories that resonate deeply with audiences. His plays published by Playwright Union Press have left an incredible mark on the theatrical landscape. Titles like The Affections of May, The Long Weekend, and Mending Fences have become beloved classics. But his talents don't stop at the writing desk. He graces the stage as an actor bringing his own creations to life, a testament to his true multifaceted artistry. As he himself eloquently put it, Creating a world from the ground up and populating with characters I've pulled out of my head, that's what truly excites me. With countless accolades and awards, including being named an Officer of the Order of Canada, his influence on Canadian theatre is immeasurable. His work is a gift that keeps on giving, touching hearts, and bringing laughter to audiences around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the prolific and the legendary, the one and only Norm Foster. Norm Foster, thank you so much for your time today, and welcome to the show. Thank you, Chris. It's a pleasure to be here. This is absolutely amazing, and I'd love to dive into it with you. You know, you've achieved an incredible milestone as the most produced playwright in Canada for the past two decades. What do you believe sets your work apart and makes it resonate so strongly with audiences? Um, uh, I can only uh, say what what people have told me, and it's that it. Uh, I write about people that everybody can identify with the ordinary Joe, ordinary Jane, uh, and people who, that they know when they, the audience is going to this, the theater to see my plays, they know they're going to know somebody on stage that they've, they, they've lived with or been with. Yeah. So it's, I think that's, that's the key. I love that. Right. With right. What you know, and make it connect. Yeah. And you know, if we go back in time, can you take us to that pivotal moment in Fredericton when you first stepped onto that stage for Harvey how did yeah. that experience shape your journey as a playwright? You know, uh, that was that was a strange. I, I never would have come. I came here from uh, Kingston, Ontario, and I was working in radio, and that was all I wanted to do. Working, I did a radio show, that was fun. And then I came here, and the woman who was the mother of the guy I was doing the morning show with, uh, a woman named Joan Spurway, ran the local community theater group. And uh, Peter was going out to audition. Her son was going out to audition for this play called Harvey. And I, he said, why don't you come with me? And I said, no, I don't know anything about theater. And I've never even seen a play. He said, well, come on. You, you At least you can watch and see what it's like. And so I said, oh, well, so I tagged along. And I sat in the, uh, in the, in the theater uh, up, in the, up in the back and watched the auditions. And then the director said to me, um, are you going to audition? And I said, no, nah, I don't know anything about theater. He says, well, you, you're a radio announcer, right? I said, yeah. He said, you must be able to read. I said, yeah. He said, well, come on up and read. So I read and I got the part of Elwood P. Dowd. Now, I knew what the movie was because I'm a movie buff. So I knew about the, the movie with James Stewart. And I thought, that was great. So I got the, the James Stewart role. And that um, that sort of a, was a whole new experience for me. And the the uh, the, the director was named, named Alvin Shaw who was a Dean of Arts at the uh, uh, University of New Brunswick. And uh, he taught me a lot about the theater, just from that, just during that one one play, he taught me a lot about, and uh, when I wrote my first play, I showed it to Alvin first, and uh, 
it wasn't the sinners it was the sinners was the first professionally produced play the one i wrote for album was was called cabin fever and he gave me some tips about well, tips about what to put in what what to change what to uh, how, how a play should progress so i learned a lot from him and that's where that's where it all began really and it was it surprised uh, me as well as anybody else that had wound up in theater so there you are I love how you were sitting at the back and the director just said, well, you can read. Come on up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's funny. So here I am. So when you look at that moment, it, outside of being in radio, was there anything else that you ever wanted to do? I mean, outside of theater and radio, if you had to choose a different path, what that what, what would that have been? <laughs> um, strangely enough, when I was younger, I wanted to be a football player. I played in a high school football team and then, uh, as as time wore on and I realized how, how badly I could get hurt playing football, I thought, no, nah, this isn't for me. So I switched over to the arts and uh, that was it. <laughs> what uh, what position did you play in football? I was the wide receiver in football. Actually, when, in, in the high school football, um, uh, I was tall and I the, the coach wanted me to be, uh, be, join the basketball team. And I said, no, no, I, I don't like basketball at all. Too much running around. But I said, if you let me play if you let me go both ways on on the football team, I'll, I'll 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 play on the basketball team too. So he bet me play offense and defense on football on the football team, and I and then I played basketball. And I'm sure he regretted that deal because I was a lousy basketball player. <laughs> but you know what your your path is here, and you're into the arts, and and especially with your illustrious career and everything that you've done. And, you know, Mr. Foster, the Melville Boys became one of your signature pieces of work, and it's garnered widespread acclaim, even enjoying a successful run off Broadway in New York. Yeah. What was it about this play that you believe struck such a chord with audiences? You know, I really got lucky with the Melville Boys. Um, I really didn't know much about, it was my maybe third, fourth play that I'd written, and I didn't know much about the, the, the craft yet. And I just wrote about these two brothers and the, the the lifestyle they had. One was a kind of a lazy oaf and one was a responsible one. And I put these two together with two women uh, sisters. And uh, it just, I just wrote what I what I thought was a nice little romantic story with, with the, these two brothers and involved with these two women. And, and it sort of, it took off for me because it, 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 it had some serious moments in it as well. And uh, I think that that sort of laid the groundwork for future plays that I wrote when I, when I realized that you can't just do a straight out comedy. Well, you can, but I don't like doing just that. I like to have a little heart in it as well. So that was that laid the groundwork for other plays that were to come. It sort of became my signature style and not just signature play, but my signature style, I think. With over 55 plays to your name, is there one that stands out a little bit more than everything else you say, you know, this is the one that I just, I love the most. Uh, well, I, I actually have one play. I think is my smartest play is called uh, on a first name basis. It's a two hander uh, about just two people who are, who talk for two hours. And that was a, for me, that was an achievement because I thought it was a, it's a smart play and what the people are, they, they, they're intelligent people who have this discussions about life and, and uh, but the other one that was one I acted in uh, called Jonas and Barry in the Home, which um, which I think touched a lot of folks. It had to do with two old men in a in a senior's home, and they they were near the end of their lives, and uh, it was a whole different approach to to playwriting for me. In that these guys didn't have much of a future, but they uh, they they made the most of their lives and. Uh, and that was the key. And uh, I think that's that's probably my my favorite play of all, I think. So would you say that um, a two-hander play, for example, would be better for a first-time director versus an ensemble piece? Hmm, that could be. It could be. Um, yeah, I, I think so. It's I'll tell you, a two-hander for me is easier to write because they're two people and they focus in on, on one or two topics throughout the the. the 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 play and uh i find it easier to write a, a two-hander than having to juggle five or six uh um characters in, in a play so it's it 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 causes me to focus on on what the story is yeah fair enough and so your involvement in theater extends beyond just writing you actually take the stage as an actor 
How does your yeah. experience as an actor inform your approach to playwriting? Oh, uh, very much so. And I'm uh, being on stage, especially when I'm, I'm working with, um, when I'm acting with uh, on stage with uh, fellow actors, uh, they usually are more experienced than I am. And they know more about the craft than I do. And I learn from them about what they're com comfortable with on stage, what they enjoy on stage, what they don't enjoy. So I learn, I learn from that. And uh, it, it, it informs a lot about the way I write the plays. For instance, writing the plays that, that I've written the last, say, 10 years, it's much different from the plays I wrote early on in my, in my career because of, I think, a lot of it because of the people I've worked with through the years. Hmm. So when you have this impactful team, it just allows you to kind of involve and grow a little yeah. bit quicker, I guess. It really does. Yeah, it really does. Now, I, I I love this about you, to be honest, is that you have a Norm Foster Theater Festival in yeah. St. Catharines, Ontario. And mm -hmm. it's a really testament to your enduring impact on Canadian theater. Can you share with us what is it like to have a festival named after you? <laughs> it's really, it's really a... It's flattering. I mean, the woman who runs the theater, Emily Oriel, it was her idea. And she came to me uh, when I didn't know her. We, we met for a coffee one afternoon. She said, I want to start a, a festival in your name. And I said, well, that's very flattering. Um, how are you going to do it? And she said, well, I don't know. I'm just going to start from scratch and get, find a location. And I said, well, Kayla, if you can do it, Emily, I was really impressed by her. I said, if you can do it, then I'll, I'll throw in with you, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to help you start it. So, but cause I'm too lazy, but if you can do it, then great. And, and she did it. She found a spot for it in St. Catharines and, uh, and she got a, a staff together and uh, she put a, a season together. And I, I, I was surprised as, as anybody that she pulled it off and it's been, it's been doing really well. I, I, I think maybe eight, nine years now, I, I forget how long, but she's, she's really uh She's a, a, a go-getter, and uh, she gets things done, and I owe a lot to her. Do you ever get the opportunity to go back to the Norm Foster Festival? I do. I go back usually once a year, and I'm going back uh, this year uh, around the month of February. Uh, it's my birthday, my 75th birthday, my heavens, and they're going to celebrate that uh, at the festival. But I, I do go back whenever I can, uh, once a year, and uh, and, and see a play and uh and yeah, and uh, it's, it's it's quite fun. It's, it's, it's a lot of it's, it's it's overwhelming for me to say, "Oh, here's a festival in my name." Wow, let's see how let's see how they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. So, with this festival and all the recognitions that you've received, and especially the officer of the Order of Canada, how does this impact your work from an artistic and reach broader communities? Do you feel that this kind of pushes you to do? To, to aim a higher or try different things? It really does. It, that's exactly what it does. Um, I feel, I, I guess the Order of Canada was, hey, I'm being recognized by my own country. This is really something for me. It's, uh, I was really proud of that. And it made me make sure that, try and make everything that I write even better than the than last thing I, I've written. And uh, it, it pushes me in, in, that, in that way to be, to be as good as I can as a writer. And so I try different styles, not different styles, but different topics. I touch on topics that I'm not familiar with, maybe. Uh, uh, like right now, I'm working on a play that, that, that's set in, a, in a, a, a financial district. Now, anybody who knows me knows that I know nothing about numbers. I, <laughs> I, I failed grade nine math, and I went to summer school. And in summer school, I got a 28 and failed it twice as bad as I did in the regular. So it's a, I, I have no good with numbers. So uh, to take on, take on a, a play that's centered around the, the numbers industry is, a, is something new for me. But so I've, I've decided I'm going to try it and see what I can do. I, I, I get a lot more confidence now. I'm far more confident than I ever was in, in writing. And I know, I know that when I start to write a play, it's going to turn out good. I, I know that. I, I feel that I, I can feel it. It's, it's going to turn out fine. So that, that helps a lot. And this new play that you're working on, when can we expect it to be hitting the stage? Well, probably next fall, I hope. Next fall, yeah. And do you have a, a name for this project yet? No, I don't. I, <laughs> I know I don't. I just said that I wrote down on a pad here the, the name of the company that that it's. And I I had I haven't read the name of the company, but the name is is three three people like Fairfield, Titan, and and and, and Morgan or something like that. And and that's where the play is going to take place. But I think the play is actually going to be called 
the name of the woman who is the central character. I haven't thought of her name yet either. You're you're in the very early stages of this 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 play. So there you go. Exclusives right there. It's coming yeah. soon. A brand new play by Norm Foster. And and sir, what advice would you give to your younger self? Like if you could go back in time and you're meeting yourself on that opening night, what would you say to your younger self about the career and choices and you know just that whole emotional ride? Um Boy, that's that's a really good question. I I would say stay as stay as humble as you can. I I I I've I've tried to stay, you know, not be bossy or be over, you know, overwhelming with with people. Be kind to the the, the fellow artists. That's that's a big thing for me. Is that I, a couple of people in my past in my early in my career who were very kind to me. Uh, Alvin Shaw, Malcolm Black, who uh, was the uh, artistic director of theater in New Brunswick back then and and uh Walter Learning he gave me a lot of help very kind people and I think you know just appreciate those people who who are, who are trying to help you and are, are being kind to you and uh, and you can't go wrong because there are a lot of people out there in this theater world who have so much experience and know so much more than I do that uh I, I listen to I listen to those people a lot and uh I treasure their their advice I really do Stay humble and accepting and uh, be prepared yeah. to listen. That's awesome. Don't be a jerk. Just don't be a jerk. <laughs> don't be really? a jerk by Norm Foster. I love it. I think that's fantastic advice. Yeah. Now, sir, some of your plays actually got turned into movies. How involved were you with that process? Not at all. Not a bit. Oh. Uh, I wasn't. Uh, I think one was uh, the foursome it was made into a movie. I, I wasn't involved in that at all. I think I had a cameo in one of those movies um but i i don't know what else has been made into a movie i'm sure there's another one but i i i don't know much about the uh the the format of a screenplay because i've never i've never i've been so comfortable writing plays for the theater that i haven't been interested in writing plays for the screen or, or movies or screenplays like their television shows uh, there is one in the works right now, but but again, somebody else is handling all the, the the heavy lifting, and I'm just along for the rides. You know, you know, if it happens, that's great. But I'm I, I so enjoy writing plays for the theater mm -hmm. that I don't I'm I'm very comfortable in there, and I I don't want to I just want to get better and better at that instead of trying to branch out and do something I'm I'm not very good at. So that's where that sits right now. Now, when you talk about writing for the theater versus writing these, you know, these, these movies, what's that process like for you, for Norm Foster, when you say, hey, I'm going to, you know, even your your newest adventure here with the the financial one, what's that process look like for you? Um, it's just, it's just it's getting the idea is, is the is the hardest part for me. Um, and most of my ideas, they, they spring from from music. Um, I, I'll listen to, I said, I, 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 I'm dying to write a new play, but I'm, I, I hadn't written one in, in like a month. I just finished my uh, last play last month. And I said, oh, I feel like I'm at loose ends. I got to start another play. So I put some music on and and the the mood uh, of, a, of a musical piece sets the tone for me, not the lyrics, it's the mood of it. And, and I think, well, I'd like to write a play that has that kind of mood to it. And that's where I get my, my ideas from. And then I just sit down and I... When I first started writing plays, I used to map out every scene, uh, right, right, just from beginning to end. I mapped out everything that happened, and the more confidence I got in my writing, the less preparation I did, and I would just get the idea, and then sit down and I know where it's going to be begin, and I think I know where it's going to end, and I'll just start writing it and work towards that ending, and I let the characters take me to the end of the play, and. Uh, I find that's that's a lot more that's a lot more fun for me, uh, not knowing where it's going and then being and creating right along with with, with the characters. And that, that sounds weird that the characters actually write the play for me, but they usually do. And uh, that's how it works for me. That that's my process now. I like that the characters write the play and just it makes it yeah. feel a little bit nicer, more emotional driven. Well, that's a, that's a yeah. beautiful answer. And, and sir, how does it feel to have this lasting impression and this touching emotional piece to almost every Canadian out there? It's really, uh, it, it's overwhelming um, to think that that the plays that I've, you know, sit at this desk and write um, have an effect on on people 
And it's really, it, it, it really moves me um, when I hear, when I get, you know, letters from actors or audience members and people who have such nice, nice things to say about the work. It's really, it's really inspiring for me. And I, I just love it. I, you know, who doesn't like, you know, to be adored? <laughs> <laughs> I, I got I got stuck in a word and I a door came out. Sorry. <laughs> who doesn't like to be to be appreciated? That's better. Appreciated. Yeah. Who doesn't like to be appreciated? I mean, I mean it's a wonderful feeling. It really is. I, it's it's uh, I'm thankful to everybody who who likes my plays and and as such kind words. It's very nice. Now, when we talk about your plays and and you know the, this fan mail that comes through from actors and audiences alike. Is there a play that you've written that you feel should be at the top of the list of the of one of these most produced plays that isn't? The first play that comes to mind when you say that is Mending Fences. Hmm. I think I I really think that's a very emotional play. It's, it's a, th a three a three hander, three characters, and I think each character has a, a certain amount of baggage that they're trying to work through. Plus, it's it's very funny. I think it's very funny too. So it's emotional and it's funny, and I think that deserves a better, a better place than it has found. I think it uh, it's a, a better play than people realize. I think. And with all the plays that you've produced, if someone was a first time director and they wanted to do a Norm Foster play for the first time, which one would you say? Hey, you know what? You've never directed before. This is the one that you should try to do. I would say a play like one of my more recent ones, like Moving In. It's funny. It's uh, it's about a family, and uh, it's four characters. That or a play called Halfway There, which is set in the Maritimes, and is very uh, heartwarming. It's uh, there's nothing very there's oh, a couple of serious points in it, but it's about these five these four women who are very close friends, and it's about their friendship, and uh, it's all about and that's a great story, and that, that's one of the more, my most produced plays these days is is that one Halfway There, so. One of those two, I think, you know, one or two you really can't miss with. Oh. And yeah. when, we, when we're looking at these new dime directors that are saying, geez, I want to follow that Norm Foster trail and, and be just like him, what would you tell a new director starting out? What motivation or advice would you give them? Well, uh, I you know, I, I've never directed a play, so it's hard for me to tell a director. I would just say, I just say, get out of the way and let, let the let the humor take care of itself. Don't don't try and push the humor because the humor is already there. So don't try and push that. Don't be too heavy-handed. And that that would be my advice. Is just stay out of the way. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? Stay out of the way, enjoy the process. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And sir, over your entire career, has there ever been a time where you felt that your creativity of well was running low? And what did you do to to kind of top it off? Uh, <clears throat> I don't think I I don't recall a time when I felt oh boy maybe I'm I've at near near the end of my my road here writing. I don't recall a time. Um, you know, we've all gone through tough periods in our life. Um, I had health problems a couple of years ago. I had health problems and heart and stuff and got over that but it never I, I never thought oh this is it for me I'm not going to write again I never thought that I always had confidence that I would continue to write so that's probably been the one one through line of my life is that I always thought that I can still write no matter what so I've been pretty lucky very lucky and when we talk about writing moving forward and constantly being there and, and as you know there's this new world of AI tools that are coming out uh, for, for everybody. What are your feelings towards AI and it being a tool for playwrights and screenwriters and authors? Uh, I haven't, uh, I actually haven't thought much about it because the plays I write, um, they, they, that AI doesn't really interest me except that when it's being misused to take advantage of, uh, of actors. Um, I don't like the idea of that, of course. I don't think anybody does. But uh, no, I'm I'm just writing the plays that that look good on stage and 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 appeal to an audience. You know, it's hard it's hard to impress a, a live audience of people um, when you think about it. You know, being on the screen, people can just turn it off and you know, go somewhere else if they want. But when you're in a theater, you want to keep that audience engaged and you want to be entertaining for them and and give them a good story. And that's what I concentrate on the, the, the AI stuff. I, I, I think maybe the AI stuff is is beyond me. 
I think maybe I'm past that. Um, I, I I don't interest. I'm not interested in, in AI that much anymore. So I, I don't think about it too much. Good. I think that's a great statement. I feel a lot of people should be in that boat as well as yeah. just leave it there and, and continue to write and perform and be creative. Yeah. Yeah. And Mr. Foster, your plays and yourself, you've performed coast to coast. Is there a Canadian theater that you enjoyed the most? Oh, well, um, geez, <laughs> that's a good one. Um, I, I do like, uh, oh, the, uh, the Lighthouse Festival Theater in Port Dover. I love going there. It's a great town, great people, and they have they do great. It's a great theater too. It's I think it seats like 300, 350 or something, and uh, it's a great place to spend a, a, a few weeks in the summer and go to your to my shows and see the audience that the audience reaction. And uh, it's I I think that might be my my favorite uh, theater in, in the country right now because I've been there so much that that's why I think. No. And out of all these theaters, is there a theater that you wanted your stuff to to play in, but it never did? <laughs> yes, I'm sure there are many. <laughs> uh, 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 the, the, the play, there's a theater in Toronto. Is it called Center Stage? I think it's right downtown in Toronto. I had a play there once. And I got the worst review I've ever had. I almost quit the business after that. And the, the, the reviewer, I won't say his name, but I remember his name. He said, I, I was a waste of time. Not my play, but I was a waste oh, of geez. time. And I remember walking down the street uh, one day and reading the newspaper and, and stopping and reading, reading that I was a waste of time. I thought, well, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> but, you know, you, you persevere and you, you keep going. But that maybe that was center stage as a, uh, a a good memory and a bad memory all at once. I've always wanted to be done there, but yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. I've been done everywhere, so I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. Uh, uh, and sir, what's something that scares you? Can you share with us? Oh, I know, I know it's scared right away because of my age. Old age scares me. Aging scares me. Frights me. Um, I have <laughs> I have. Uh, a uh, uh, beer with a friend or two friends every twice a week here in, in Fredericton at a bar in Fredericton. And we just had a meeting. We call the meetings. We had a meeting yesterday and we we're all about the same age. We laugh and have a great time. And then every once in a while I think, Oh, you know, I get, they get, we have three grandchildren. You know, the oldest one is like 15, 15. How did that happen? <laughs> and and uh, so we, we, we talk about all things, but for, I think of the three of us, aging worries me the most um and it does because i you know i've been through a few things uh, uh medically and uh, i think boy how, how much longer can i hang on but uh, i'm fingers crossed i'm doing well so I, I can't complain but that's what that's what worries me i think is aging and not being able to do the things i i used to do or, yeah i think that's that's it and uh, sir what is something about you that you would say people tend to misunderstand about you the most uh, I think for the most part, and as it goes from, from the uh, my the past play, plays I may have written early in my career, that people think that I'm I'm not very my plays aren't very uh, uh, how can I say deep or uh, um, profound. Well, they're not profound, <laughs> but but I think my my writing is a lot more uh, a lot more serious than people might think. They think I'm just a or I write comedies. That's not that's not true at all. Uh, the plays have a serious underpinning, and they're a lot more serious than uh, than people think they might be. I'm, I'm known as the, you know the the king of comedy in Canada, theater writing, and uh, people say it. You know, I, I used to get compared all the time to Neil Simon, and I used to I used to hate that. So why why did my Neil Simon? And then I thought I thought well what's what's wrong with being compared to Neil Simon? Brilliant writer, he was a brilliant writer. Why? why why not be compared to him? That's nothing. What's, what's wrong with that? So I've changed my attitude a lot to uh, uh, appreciate more of, of what goes into a, a comedy because underneath the comedy is usually a lot of heart, and that's very important. So uh, I'm uh, I'm thrilled to be compared to anybody who, who's a successful writer. And sir, I have time for one last question for you. And thank sure. you so much for being here. It's uh, what makes Norm Foster smile. You know, it makes me smile. <laughs> this is going to sound cheap, but when I'm writing a play and I and I write a, a funny line, I laugh out loud at, at, at the computer. I'll just sit here and laugh. I'll say, that's funny. 
That's funny. And, I, and that makes me smile. That along with the old cliches, my grandchildren make me smile. My, my children make me smile. That's, that's great. But that's expected. But, you know, when you sit in, we, people say, do you ever laugh at your own place? I laugh all the time. Somebody once said to me, uh, a friend of mine, David Nairn, who runs Theater Orange, said, nobody laughs at Foster like Foster. And he's right. I do. I, I sit in the audience and I laugh at the plays. I have a great time. Otherwise, why do it? You know, if I don't have a good time, why would I do it? I love that. I love that's the, you know, the cliche. Yeah, my kids, my grandkids life, you know, great. But when you're laughing at your own jokes. That's <laughs> I know. That's that's the key. <laughs> well, sir, as I said, that was my last question for you. Thank you so much for joining us today on uh, Coffee with Chris. I really appreciate your time. Everyone out there, remember to smile to inspire and have a fantastic day. The legendary Norm Foster, everybody. Thanks, Chris. Thank you very much.